This episode of The General's Gentleman is sponsored by Ashes of the Singularity. Take control of epic battles in a massive scale RTS where you control thousands of units. With up to 14 players per game, it's the biggest RTS to date. Welcome to The General's Gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another game of Total Annihilation. The first cast that I posted was very well received and I had a blast casting it, so I've definitely um, been planning on doing another one since since I, I did upload that first video. Today I'm going to be doing a 2v2. So my reasoning behind this is that I figured if I do a 2v2 it should be a little bit more action packed. Which will make it a lot easier to cast because I think I've already said a lot of the stuff that I can monologue about in the first cast and so the more action that we have, I think it's going to be better for everyone watching and make it, of course, more easy for me to really deliver that commentary. So, I uh, I forgot the player's names, but it'll be in the, the video title anyway. And once again, I seem to have this, this UI problem where I can't see the entire of the screen. That There's certain parts that are, that are locked out. And I know some people will even comment saying that you, your resolution isn't set right, but... It's, it's really weird because the, the resolution that I have works completely fine when I launch a game and play a game. And I think I mentioned this in the first video, but using this replay tool that, as far as I can tell, is using the same resolution. It just isn't um, displaying it properly, so I know it doesn't matter. Uh, other than that, um, we are going to have at least core in the bottom right and... Uh, the bottom left as well, so it looks like it's going to be arm versus... Oh no, this core as well, so it's two cores versus one arm and one core, so at least you do get a, a bit of a mix, but this is actually a pretty small map. We see already several of these flash fast assault tanks. Uh, no construction tank, construction vehicle coming out of this factory uh, early on, going for it now. So normally you go for that construction vehicle first, and then you go for some scout vehicles and some harassment units here, but uh, the orange play here, he's going really aggressive. I wonder if I can actually bring up the other uh, list of players. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't be able to remember four player names, most likely. So this is going to be pretty nasty. The commander actually out of position as well. I believe he's in, in near this radar station, so... Not going to be able to defend against this. Has to rotate back in, which will take up some time. A couple of the weasel scout vehicles as well going to be poking away at these construction vehicles, but they're pretty tough. It takes a while for those weasels to really do any damage here. Unlike these flash tanks already taking out the construction vehicle, now we have the instigator tanks. Now, no one noticed this. I was expecting a lot of angry comments. Last game, I actually mistook the names the instigator and the, the raiders. The instigator is the light tank. The raiders, the heavy tank. You can't see this, unfortunately. <laughs> Man. My apologies there. That's unfortunate. But he is actually taking out uh, one of those solar panels. Um, he, he used the D gun there, so you know, able to take those out. So really, early on, you want to avoid the commander because the commander can just kill you with those D gun, um, the, the D gun, pretty effectively. So avoid the commander as best as you can. Try and go for undefended areas like the metal extractors and such. So ultimately, that rush didn't really do a lot. It took out a solar uh, solar collector and a couple of tanks, but it wasn't really efficient harassment, we'll say. A lot of the instigator tanks now for the red player. And a counter attack now as well for blue. So he wants to return the pain. And this is a good sort of way to expand in the sense that he has his commander defending all these areas and then his main base, there's there's a laser turret and there's you know his production. So he's going to be pumping out those tanks. So it will be hard to find some harassment here. I love this, how he has the weasel in front. So he sees how many of those instigator tanks are there and decides to avoid them. Actually splitting up his tanks. Wants to try and find a flank. Looking to get some damage done, but a really great response. Will completely intercept those instigators and will force them off. Maybe we'll go down and snipe this extractor, but... Sniping extractors isn't a big deal if there's a, if there's a construction unit there nearby to just replace it. The, the, the building itself is really cheap. It's what, what's, what's punishing more so is the the lost mining time, but if you're rebuilding it effectively straight away, then you're not really losing any mining time.
Yeah, so once again, we see more Commander D guns taking out those, uh, those raiding tanks. Everyone's gone with a vehicle lab as well, so no, no K-Bots just yet. I like how there's radar too, it's very, very important. We'll, we'll see incoming vehicles, and when it's a map this small, you know there's going to be vehicles running around pretty early on. A lot of these spread out metal deposits as well, so... Control of the middle of the map is going to be really important. Look at this, three metal extractors there, another three up here as well, so if... If someone's able to lock these down and, and start getting some of those defenses, particularly the... The tier 2 defenses, the, the, the heavy laser turrets, the, uh, the bulwark in the case of... Uh, arm and I, I think core gets the, the pop-up flame turret, which is which is pretty good So just massing out these these tanks for now So K-Bots can be a good transition to go for the the heavy K-Bots even even from the tier one the the warriors and uh, Whatever the core equivalent is called because they trade really well for this these light tanks, but especially good is the the, the tier two heavy K bots like the the can, the Zeus. Those are really good because they, these light tanks are not very good versus the the more heavy units. Should be able to take this one down, I believe. Still don't have health bars. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, this is a pretty big army. I love how he has the dragon's teeth. That does make a big difference. So I, be I believe the, the uh, laser will, will hit the walls most of the time. I don't know entirely how it works, but... Because I think sometimes they will still hit the gun, but most of the time they won't. But then you have certain other projectiles that will always go over it, depending on the um, the angle, like the, he the heavy tanks will, the artillery things will. So those walls make such a big difference. And he's actually snuck through though. He can do a lot of damage here. Two of those metal extractors, the wind collector, probably this other uh, deposit extractor here as well. The radar is very fragile. It's actually inside of those collectors, so that's going to be a little bit harder to take out. Now, you should retarget the metal extractor because that'll go down very quickly. But these tanks won't. Yeah, it's a shame. Didn't really do that much there. Good response there by the the green core player, able to you know, damage control. And given how many tanks red lost, he probably. It wasn't worth it because now there's a large army here. You can go for a pretty decent counter attack. And continuing to throw these tanks around the map. A lot of laser turrets. Very, very important to have these laser turrets down. And they're not expensive either, so it just makes it so hard to harass. And um, they have good range too, so. You know, often you can't really retreat from them because you're, you're in too deep. So now, for example, if he retreats, he's going to lose all his tanks. He's going to have to go in. Maybe he'll take out that other laser turret there. Even the extractor too, actually. That could be pretty decent. Oh, yeah. He will get cleaned up here, but that's good damage. Alright, a lot of laser tanks here for both of our players. Many a pew pew, as they say. I hope he does get the dragon's teeth here, especially if he if he wants to get these metal extractors. He needs to really secure this more. But great engagement here from Red, catching the, the tanks a little bit out of position there. They weren't quite grouped up, so they, they weren't all in that fight. Wow, it's a lot of laser turrets. This is where heavy units comes really useful, like the, uh, the heavy tanks. Well, 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 so they're actually called medium tanks. Well, what I mean is the the heavier equivalent on the tier one. So that's the the raiders um, and the the stumpies. And by the way, I really don't like those names. It's really unintuitive that the instigator is the light tank and the heavy tank is raider. That that's unintuitive. Raider suggests it's a light unit that raids, which is exactly what this thing does. So, I I don't accept responsibility for making the mistake in my previous cast. I'm the victim in all this. Um, there's actually some weird naming conventions in, in TA. A lot of the core units are named after animals. 
which you think arms should be, because they're the faction that like nature. I'm trying to think of some examples. There's Weasel, that's one of them. And I know there's a few others that are animal names. And, you know, Core are supposed to be this race of machines, so the fact that they have this... this nature naming convention for some of their units just seems thematically inconsistent. Okay, things have calmed down a little bit here. Still a lot of these light tanks. I know they're called fast assault tanks or fast attack tanks, but light tanks is just a lot easier. So they're putting a bomber. That can be pretty damn effective here. No anti-air in uh, really anywhere on this map. So I wonder if he goes for the tanks or if he goes straight for the base, tries to get some of the power. Power is generally better. I think the tanks are somewhat durable versus bombers. Depends where the AoE hits, because it's like a line attack, so if they're moving sideways, you might only hit a couple of them. Okay, here is the the Shadow Bomber, taking out two of those extractors, very effective. And it's going to be a lot of laser tanks clashing, but more importantly, how much does this Bomber get done going for all of these extractors? This is crazy effective. It's four of them so far. Red has a lot more tanks, but laser fire from these turrets will be contributing. The bomber continuing to take out these extractors. There's actually the Finx scout plan as well. They got shot down. There, we finally went down to those laser turrets. So, yeah, anti-air is sort of strange in this because everything can attack anti-air, but with a small chance of hitting it. So that was pretty effective. They took out a lot of those extractors. Counter-attack now from blue. Oh, he's actually found the commander. Uh, probably can't take this. The commander can get taken out here, but only there's light tanks. and this, that, that was a nasty degun shot, taking out four of them. Only one shot there, so that was a bit better. And we see him finally going for the K-Bot lab. Now he has a couple of... has a warrior on the field. Uh, I think he's trying to focus on the K-Bot lab. He might get it too. His buildings are not as tough as you'd think. It's going to be a close one, though. No, it survives. Might have to repair that now. I'm sure it's quite low after all that. That was a bad engagement there for Blue. A lot of these flash tanks. Going for now his heavier tanks, the medium tanks that is, the um, the the Raider. So they're a lot better versus the Warriors. The Warriors are pretty nuts versus the light tanks. And with that many of the flash tanks, which, which are the light tank equivalent, the, the medium tanks should be able to hit them. They're, the problem with those tanks is they have a very slow firing projectile, so they just miss all the time. But when there's so many tanks, you're going to miss one tank, but then scatter into the next. So it doesn't matter so much in that case. And actually some infantry K-Bots as well. So a little bit surprised he's going for those as opposed to the the heavy K-Bots. I'm pretty sure Core will get... They, they do get a heavier... Yeah, they, they do. They, they do get it like a... I think it's called a heavy infantry K-Bot. There's a number of them though. A lot better positioning too because he's defending, so he's he's a lot more concentrated, so it's just more effective DPS. Gonna be flanking as well with a number of these instigated tanks and laser turrets are also gonna be opening up here. Should be the end of this army. Let's see how much he can get done with it. Looks like nothing. Yeah, this game has consisted of a, of a lot of unsuccessful attacks and there's actually a the heavy laser turret there off the edge of the screen, you can tell by the the green laser. Green more powerful than red for some reason. I sort of wish that it was all the lasers for core were red, but then the stronger ones were thicker, but probably wouldn't have worked very well. And then if, if the arm lasers were green instead of red, Sort of like Star Wars, where you know all the all the the Sith uh, lightsabers are red, and the Jedi ones are blue and green, and purple, and yellow. And if you're playing the games, then you think you get orange too. You get all kinds of funky ones, but mainly blue and green because they look nice. Did I say purple? I, I hope I said purple. 
Alright, medium tanks gonna be opening up. A lot tougher as well, so they don't get taken out as easily. Oh wow, I had to hit prevented the bulwark. The very nice timing. Because bulwarks are quite expensive, so they're a big investment if you can't actually finish them. Had that finished, that would have been very nasty. Is bring another one though, slightly further back, with two of the construction vehicles. They have a lot of range, a lot of damage, and I haven't played a lot of TA, but in my experience, these things seem really overpowered. They're just so cost efficient. They can they can kill multiple times their investment, and they're they pop up. So when they're when they're not in combat, they're actually quite tough. Okay, that was a construction aircraft. I think he was on patrol, looking to reclaim those wrecks. Oh, I geothermal power. I wonder if there's any others. Anyone I can see. I do hear heavy laser turrets. Somewhere. This is a great army though. He has those those tanks mixed in as well. Very powerful short range damage. Excellent versus the flash tanks. But a really great response once again from both of the players in the top. Intercepting these armies. A little bit mistimed. Here comes Blue's tanks. A little bit late to the fight, but... Not much defending units left for Orange, it would seem. Here comes the commander. Could get a nasty D-gun. Yeah, he gets three of them. The warrior K-bot there as well. But there's still so many of these tanks. The K-bots are mixed in as well. Red's army is routed, but he may just reinforce his teammate. Oh, here's the bulwark. Has to avoid that one. Completely wrecking those K-Bots. He's actually putting walls around this now. I think he should avoid this, but he can probably take it out if he fully commits to it. But it will be costly. It would make it a lot easier to harass him again. And taking out that geothermal would be really good. He should be able to just muscle his way through this with that many tanks. Had the wall completed, that would have made a big difference. It's a little bit too late now. Construction cable gets taken out. Boarding the ones at the back first maybe wasn't the best choice. But you just see how much damage this is doing. This is just wrecking all of these tanks. It's going to go down, but it's certainly paid itself off. Just taking all this punishment. There it goes, finally. <laughs> wow, a bit of a flank here as well. Actually took out a lot of the base. Orange is uh, out of stuff. Probably gonna be GG now. I think I was too busy expressing my salt for how powerful this thing is and actually missed <laughs> a whole bunch of carnage. There was a geothermal power that went down. Oh no, there must be storage, I think. Yeah, the storage, not geothermal. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty nuts. It still has a geothermal power here, at least, so the... The power income should be decent, but the metal income, not very happy. Can the green man hold out? He doesn't really have a lot. I'm trying to go for more bombers, too. Effectively, 2v1 at this stage. You see... We're putting one of those, those plasma cannons there. It's like an artillery piece. Pretty effective. Yeah, look how many tanks are right here. This is nuts. I think he just... Oh, there's a laser turret that got blown up? Okay, he's actually building a heavy laser turret there. He's sending in construction aircraft. What's he going to be building? Oh wow, takes out the construction vehicle, doesn't finish the heavy laser turret. There's one here. Yeah, you see that the dragon's teeth is absorbing all of these shots. It does get taken out though, because these tanks are very powerful, and there's so many of them, but certainly bought some time. Down it goes. Yeah, he's reclaiming wrecks is what he's doing, so on patrol. Should be a lot of metal here on that bulwark wreck. There it is, that's the heavy, heavy infantry K-Bot.
The base is pretty undefended. Only a handful of tanks. And the commander's in the middle here too, so it looks like we are seeing a big wraparound with these AK bots. Certainly a big army for Blue's tanks. A lot of these solo generators here. Okay, here come the heavy AK bots. These are really powerful. They're quite slow. So if you can avoid those, he'll be okay, but it looks like he's being completely intercepted and we'll lose these tanks now. So great defense by Green. A lot of Rex now to reclaim as well. What happened to these K-Bots? Oh, they're still here. Wow. Advanced Construction K-Bot Lab. Doesn't really have a lot of income to support that, but... I guess he wants to get the Zeus... Uh, K-Bots out. I'm, do I always say the Zeus Cruisers? Because those are the... <laughs> the Cruisers from Ashes of the Singularity. So when, when I, when I use the, hear the word Zeus, I just... My brain thinks of Zeus Cruiser. Zeus K-Bot. I, I have to make that very deliberate. I don't know what that is. Is that a jammer? I have no idea what that one is. The other one's a radar to the left. Okay, he's going for a counter-attack, is green, but there's a lot of these tanks in position. Decides to pull back instead. Wow. Lost several of those expensive, heavy K-Bots. Look, look at these solar generators. There's got to be at least 50 of them there. It's nuts. Oh, there's more here too, jeez. That's so many. I don't know who's shooting who. Ah, oh, Moho Extractor. So he's on tier 2 now. Gonna be getting the extra income from the tier 2 Extractor. Okay, this is a good position. The bulwark, a lot of tanks as well. Getting another one here on the right would completely shut off the, the right side for an attack path, but with that tier 2 vehicle plan, he can just go for the, the artillery rockets, the uh, diplomats. Oh, wow, the, guard, the plasma cannon here. Very good AoE damage. really hard to fight around that. If you can take that out, that would be a really big win for him. There's no defenses near it. Only the anti-air turret. Yeah, nice. He's able to clean up all these tanks. Okay, the bulwark actually finished, so all those AK pots get wrecked. A lot of stumpies there as well, so they're good versus the heavy units, which we may start to see coming out soon. Look at the range on that thing. <laughs> Still firing. Oh my god. Doesn't look like he can reach this though. Or maybe he doesn't have vision on it. So I want to see what vehicles he's going for. Okay, that is... I don't know what that is. It looks pretty good though. <laughs> I actually have no idea what that is. I guess we'll find out. Reaper tanks as well, the heavy flame tanks. Man, there's so many of these though. I just got an email. Yes. For those of you who've been following our channel for a while, 
you may remember that, that we, we used to have a really bad habit. Well, well, I used to have a bad habit of keeping my Facebook open in a cast, and there would always be these these Facebook messages, which was really annoying. But and that, we don't do that anymore. I, I make a deliberate effort to close Facebook, but I don't close my email, and it's not often <laughs> I actually get an email. Or at least not like during the day when I'm casting. Normally I'll get an email overnight and I'll wake up because I'm in Australian time zone. And when I say get an email, I mean an important email on my actual business email. I have like another email that I use for all just crap when I sign up for websites and such. I think everyone does. Or at least you'd hope that they would have multiple emails used for different things in order to prevent spamming up their primary email. But this income here, wow, that's a lot of construction aircraft. Oh my god. So, I think the south team is just going to out, out eco this. They've got tier 2 extractors. They've got all kinds of spam of, of, of solar collectors. I don't really see what hope there is for the north. A lot of these Zeus K-bots. Um, so maybe if he pushes now, maybe it's an overinvestment here in economy. Or at least... In the short term it is, but it'll certainly pay off if, if the game does drag out. Um, I mean, so many construction aircraft, he can build whatever he wants. So I think he, that's his his Moho Extractor squadron to fly around, insta-building Moho Extractors. Oh, wow, fusion power plant. The uh, Goliath tanks, the super heavy tanks. Hammer artillery K-bots as well, so I like that. Because there's a lot of defenses now. Okay, here comes the army of these tanks. I don't know if these Reapers will be enough. Really good concave though. He's in a really solid, tight formation. And these units don't, I guess, they don't scale that well in the sense of they have short range. So when you combine that short range with bad pathfinding, you know, a game from the 90s, pathfinding's not good. They're very spread out. They're not very dense. So you have a very low, effective DPS. And that really makes a big difference here. The, 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 the Tier 2 units that have a lot less model count, they will have a lot higher effective DPS on top of whatever other bonuses they have. Because they're all firing where, you know, only a small number of these are firing at any given time. I don't even think he's lost any of his Reapers yet. Repairing them would be quite nice. Okay, their bulwarks opening up on these AK bots. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Orange has recovered. Well, it recovered, but it's because Blue wasn't putting on pressure. He went the eco route instead. These are, I think, resource... I mean, they're metal makers, so... Yeah, this is more income. This fusion power. Playing for the long haul. I don't see... Okay, there's a Moho extractor there for, for green or aqua. Oh, there's actually a couple more here as well. Uh, Orange is... Well, he's got Moho Extractors too, so I guess they're not that far behind. But the South team has a lot more of the, the center, so they have a lot more of those deposits. And these Goliaths are super strong. Does he go for the Spider Bots? That'd be quite nice, because they, they're able to take out the weapons. The problem is there's so many of these raiders and the instigators mixed in that they can either just focus down the, the spiders. The spiders are really weak, uh, so they get focused down quickly, but they're pretty cheap and you know, for one-on-one -on -one situations, if there's five spiders and five goliaths, then you're shutting down all those powerful weapons. Okay, he's going in for him. Pretty long range too. Does he commit?
Wow, this left side's really undefended. And there's seven Reaper tanks now. Whoa, 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 rapiers. Oh my god, there's a lot of gunships. It's gonna need a lot of anti-air. Those are the, are the mortar K-bots, I think? Right, here we go. Full army commitment from Orings is pulling the trigger. The Bulwark does get taken out by the Goliaths, but they're being completely surrounded by the Zeus K-bots. Turning their tower to disengage, but they're so slow that they can't get away in time. Or at least not all of them. We may see a couple of them survive. Running into the defensive line of the heavy laser turrets, the AK bots nowhere to be seen. Those Goliath tanks are just so tough that even despite being collapsed upon, most of them are still alive. Here come the, the tanks for reinforcements. Most of the Zeus K bots have been taken out. Wow. Actually, a great engagement there for, for Blue. I didn't think it would go so well. And now he's going for the counterattack with the K-Bots. Meanwhile on the left side, the Reaper Heavy Tank still just looking for damage. Mortar K-Bots as well, gonna be shelling apart these, um, Imol uh, whatever these tanks are called. But that may not matter here, we could see Orange get taken out. No defenses in the back of his base. A lot of expensive, fragile structures. Even the right side, nothing here apart from his commander, but... The Zeus Cruisers, uh... Pff, the Zeus K-Bots have been able to... Uh, catch up, but the AKs are just so much faster and able to disengage from them. The Rapier's absolute enormous army size, able to take those ra those Reapers down in second. There's some anti-air, but not a lot, and those are pretty weak, those anti-air turrets. I think that's going to be the GG here, folks. There goes the storage in the back. That many gunships is nuts. You really need to have flak anti-air, because there's so many of them. The AoE damage is absolutely essential. Yeah, there wasn't really any chance for the North to come back with that much of an eco difference. I mean, just look at that. There must be a hundred solar collectors there. That's just absolutely crazy. GG. Oh, what? Oh my god! I was re Okay, so I, I did have Facebook open. Well, that's, uh... That's embarrassing. That's- I, I harped on about how much better I am. And- and yet, big, big noob has Facebook open still, but... Oh well, GG. I mean, that was- that was a fun game. 2v2s- yeah, I was- I was certainly right about it being more action-packed, I think mainly because the map was actually quite a small map. Larger 2v2s, I certainly imagine, would be a bit more, uh, a bit less action-packed, a bit more passive, so... GG, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Let me know if you do want to see more TA, and, you know, what game modes you would like to see, 1v1, team game. I, I think I'm going to do more team games, just, just because... I, I feel like they're going to be a bit more, um, yeah, as I said at the start, it's more easier to cast and... More, more dependable. 1v1s, I, I think they're, they're going to be hit and miss. Where team games, you know, it's you, you just blob units and that's fun. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. My name has been The Machine of the Generals, gentlemen. Subscribe for more RTS content. We do post several different RTS games on our channel. And follow me on Twitter, at GGTheMachine. Link for that is in the description. Cheers.